All right, good morning. Good morning, Hamera. Okay, we'll uh, go through the uh, order flow uh, in the live markets here with Bookmap. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, for more information, you can go to bookmap.com and uh, find out more about uh, ways of connecting uh, and uh, uh, the uh, book map for equities here, understanding uh, exactly uh, what it is and uh, how we're connecting with NASDAQ total view. Uh, and, um, and then some of the pricing uh, information is here as well. So if you want to give Bookmap a try uh, and get a 14-day trial period, uh, you've got it. Uh, and um, uh, there are, uh, uh, basically, there's just two different versions here. Now, the DX feed for equities is, is packaged here, but there's basically just two, two versions, a so basic uh, Bookmap and advanced Bookmap. Okay? They are billed quarterly, and the differences between the two uh, are um, the uh, uh, one-click trading and the add-on features here. All right, so uh, that's uh, that's that. The um, uh, once you register at uh, at Bookmap.com, you'll have access to a lot of the uh, educational materials here. You can watch these video snippets that uh, we highly recommend. Understand what the order flow uh, occurrences uh, in phenomena in Bookmap. Uh, uh, how to uh, understand it and uh, uh, digest that and then uh, uh, start to see it in the chart for yourself and integrate it into the way that you trade. The um, uh, recorded webinars are here. Both links will take you to the YouTube page uh, and then uh, you can see here the, um, uh, here's the YouTube page. Uh, you can also go to other playlists here uh, and uh, the uh, order flow video snippets are here. Okay. All right. So that's that. Uh, and let's move on here. Okay. So we'll, we'll jump right in uh, and um, we will um, uh, take a look at the higher time frames. Uh, today's a uh, Fed day. Uh, so, you know, markets are going to be. Um, uh, you know, probably pretty quiet, or you know, uh, you know, bouncing around between ranges, uh, uh, waiting for the uh, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, but um, uh, we'll take a look anyway and see what uh, uh, shaping up in the order flow here in Bookmap. Uh, let's see, Homera, if you download 6.1, there you automatically charge for equities. No, uh, not at all. Uh, you can download and install Bookmap 6.1, uh, oh. but um, uh, that's that. If you want uh, equities though, uh, then you will need to purchase the DX feed. Okay, uh, that's how it works. Uh, and uh, you'll just have to hit the upgrade button uh, uh, once you log in. Uh, it's here. Let me show you. Once you log in, whoops, no, it's not there. It is here. Um, uh, add ons or upgrade. I, I believe it, it will be the uh, add ons here. Uh, but uh, if not, then try the upgrades. All right. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so this is the process we're going to go through. We go through it every day, um, looking at the macro view, getting a feel for what's going on out there in the market, uh, larger levels of support and resistance, however it is that uh, you look at it. Uh, but then we want to look at the microstructure in Bookmap. All right, and then uh, and I'll define that for you uh, as well, so you guys know uh, uh, you know exactly what we're looking at. Microstructure, the real, the real term for microstructure is, uh, you know, we're not looking at minutes, we're looking at, at uh, you know, maybe just uh, seconds uh, or even sub-second for microstructure, but you'll see what I mean. Um, anyway, uh, then the, um, we'll look at the uh, uh, order flow very objectively. All right, and uh, that, that's where we really dive in and uh, go through the process. Now, uh, doing this process here, uh, very, trying to go through it very objectively and so it's useful for you. Uh, this will allow you to pinpoint your entries and your exits and, and also your trade management. Okay, so uh, then this is the process here. Once we show up and understand the uh, mac micro and macro structures, the auction. All right, and, th and we'll go through this here. But let's start off with the higher time frames and take a look here. Uh, let's, uh, wow, oil, uh, we see oil inventories here, so uh, big move to the downside. 
Uh, I'll stay away from oil. Uh, maybe I'll show something in there just to, for the fundamental release uh, to show um, what that looks like in Bookmap. Uh, and um, uh, understanding of liquidity and lack of liquidity and volatility. Okay, all of those things are combined and uh, uh, you can really read it very visually and clearly uh, in Bookmap. Uh, it really gives you the insight to what how these you know markets uh, work, the, the mechanics of these markets. Uh, and then uh, uh, it kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it makes the point here. What Bookmap is, is it's, it's very, very objective information. It's really a, a, a very um, complete picture of what's going on in the market, all right? We're, we're a trading platform. We're not a strategy, nor are we an indicator. Uh, we're, we are a, um, a platform that is just giving a, a really clear picture of what's going on in the marketplace. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at the ES uh, instead, and um, let's uh, we do have a little bit of movement here, so that's good. Uh, so um, all right, so higher time frames, uh, you can see that uh, we came back up, and uh, well, let's let's actually look at the daily chart first. All right. So we've been kind of in a range here for several days, as you can see, and uh, bouncing back and forth between this uh, 2415 uh, on up to around this uh, 2446 or, or 45 area. All right. Now let's look at a 30-minute chart. And you can see uh, we came up uh, just this morning at the, uh, looks like the open here. No, 830, we had some news, came up and tested uh, the uh, high from uh, several days ago, right, back on June 9th on Friday. Uh, and you can see that uh, sellers are engaged here, right? Sellers jumped into this market, and we see a nice move uh, to the downside. Okay, where are the buyers? Well, uh, let's just outline some of these higher levels here. Uh, I would, the first area I'd be interested to, uh, to see if there's uh, buyers would be below these swings at uh, 2435. Uh, or uh, other areas, maybe down in this, these swings here, or uh, you might look at a, a range uh, as well. Uh, it may be uh, kind of a, a volume uh, cluster or node uh, somewhere in this area here. Uh, you know, are they going to support price? Maybe around this 2430 uh, on down to this, uh, um, or, I'm sorry, 31 down to 230, okay? Uh, anyway, uh, that, that's uh, that's what we see on this uh, half-hour chart. Let's look at a five-minute chart. Okay, and uh, really not too much to see here. Um, you know, we just uh, that initial move uh, at the uh, 8:30 here, and then you can see 9:30 with the cash open. We see the the move right right down uh, right away, and we've continued to the downside since. Okay, starting to get some wicks down here though. Starting to see a little bit of buying uh, right into this area that we just outlined. Okay, so what does that look like in Bookmap? Let's take a look. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to have to quit some things here. All right. Okay, let's take a look at the ES. And I'm going to zoom out all the way, and uh, you can zoom out very quickly uh, with Bookmap just by using your center mouse wheel, uh, or you can use the zoom tools up here uh, if you like. Uh, I just find it easier using the uh, uh, center mouse wheel, and uh, it's very, very quick. All right, well, here, here's what it looks like. Uh, here's our 930 open. Uh, we can see that, uh, you know, maybe a, maybe a little bit of movement. Uh, it looks like basically all selling, to be honest, right at 9.30, and we've just continued to sell off uh, to the downside, okay? Uh, and then uh, in terms of um, microstructure now, uh, let's take a look, and this isn't really so micro. That's that's what I was uh, alluding to beforehand, uh, but we, we'll draw in some structure here and get a feel for what's going on, okay? So uh, I like a trend line like that, uh, and we're testing that area now. Okay, uh, and um, uh, other areas of interest. Uh, let's uh, let's see here. Okay, well, I'm looking at areas where we broke from, 
uh, and then returning back to, okay? So we broke from here, uh, basically, um, but uh, uh, we can see we turned back to into this area here in this kind of high volume node right here, uh, and we did not go up any further. So I'm, I'm gonna put that swing in here at uh, 2440, uh, and um, I'm also gonna look for this swing here uh, at uh, 36 and a half or so. Uh, and um, uh, that's uh, that, that looks good for now. Um, okay. And all right, so we can see the uh, the tail here just before 11 o'clock uh, and the move down here and a lot of selling down to new lows. Uh, but um, uh, reading this structure, I mean, this trend is still intact, okay? In fact, uh, now we can start to get into the order flow, okay? Uh, and, uh, and what do we see? Well, um, look at some of these areas here. Um, these are little points of exhaustion up uh, just beyond this trend line here, okay, and uh, and we can see that there were no buyers, okay. There there is no uh, no interest in in taking this up further, maybe into that higher liquidity here at 36. All right, and uh, let's go through the process then for the uh, order flow. Uh, so we looked at the microstructure, we looked at the higher time frames. Now let's look at uh, uh, the auction. Okay, we're showing up to the marketplace looking at the auction and understanding what's going on there. And uh, what do we see? Okay, first question uh, is where are the majority of the participants? Okay, we want to understand the current configuration of the book. It's just like showing up at any other auction and understanding uh, where most of the uh, uh, buyers uh, and sellers uh, are lining up, where there's interest. All right, and let's answer that question. Let's take a look here. Uh, and uh, we can see very clearly uh, pretty high areas of liquidity here at 36 and down here at 33. Okay, these are the highest areas in the book for right now. And we're channeling between those two areas. Okay, so that answers that first question. Let's jump back here. Uh, how do these participants behave when price approaches them? Uh, that's, uh, this is a, a very important question uh, to understand if these, uh, the majority of these participants uh, really mean to trade at their areas or not. All right, and let's take a look here. All right, so I mean, we, we need to test these areas to see first uh, if that condition is true or not. Uh, as price comes up toward them, uh, do they stay in the book? And uh, so far, so good. We're coming back up to that area of exhaustion. Okay, where we just exhausted before. This is actually looking pretty good for maybe, a, I, th I think we're, you know, we're, we're looking for maybe uh, this uh, 36 and a half area to be tested. And um, I'll get to that in just a minute here. But, um, uh, and, and why, right? We're starting to break this trend line here, uh, but we're starting to get volume trading above the trend line, right? And volume above where these were exhausted previously, we're starting to see some green dots and some, some, some buying activity here, okay? So therefore, I'm looking for the next area to get tested, and that would be this swing here up at uh, 36 and a half, all right? And uh, here we go. Okay, we're up at 36, uh, and we can answer that second question now, all right? Since we just came in and tested it, did these guys want to trade here at 36? And the answer is no. Okay. As price came right up to them, they pulled their high liquidity out of the book. Okay, right beforehand. Okay, and nothing, nothing traded into that high liquidity. And you can see their behavior here. Look at how it was bright here, and then they started to pull as it got darker. Okay, and then right as price came up into this area, they pulled that liquidity. Okay, look at their starting, and and we we can pretty much judge it here. Uh, this player here pulled their liquidity and added it up three ticks higher. Okay, up at this uh, 36 and three quarters. Okay, and why do I say that? Well, I can I can look directly at it. Uh, it was, uh, it, you know, it got uh, a little darker here and it got brighter up here at that same moment. Okay, and uh, that's the uh, the behavior we're we're looking for. Uh, to, to, to judge, uh, this is, this is a bullish uh, behavior. For the bulls, this is a good thing. They're pulling liquidity to higher levels here, all right? Okay, so we're answering that second question now, 
Okay. And now that, that uh, third question, uh, which I um, uh, already um, uh, kind of uh, uh, precluded here, um, was the transactions. Okay, what is the tape telling us? Um, where, um, where are the transactions taking place? Okay, reading, reading the traded volume in the tape. All right, and uh, we were reading it here previously. Okay, and we're getting a shift in the order flow right now. All right. Uh, we saw these little points of exhaustion. We saw the trend was still intact, okay? But that, that picture changed right in this area here, okay? We started to note that uh, more volume trading up here, uh, it was not exhausting out. In fact, we found buyers, okay? And buyers are still engaged in here, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, um, where are they on the bid now? What's the configuration of the book now? Okay. Well, there, we noticed them pull from uh, 36, and they're up at 36 and three quarters. Okay. And um, uh, what about the bid? Well, they're 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 getting pretty bullish too. You know, we see higher liquidity up here at 34 now, so they want to be buyers down down here, or it's up a little higher than previously. It was at 33. Okay, looking looking again for these green dots. Let's see the con, you know continuation here. Uh, up into our high liquidity area. Okay. Any of these uh, sellers uh, that were involved in this trend here, well, they're going to be buyers as we come up into these some of these areas here. They're going to be uh, trailing their stops down, uh, and it uh, looks like uh, uh, we have the potential here uh, to run those stops okay, to the upside. Uh, the um, But we're gauging this, uh, this auction here because we're also finding Sellers are uh, are jumping in here at this uh, 36 and three quarters, okay, and also now at 37, okay, and uh, maybe the buyers won't want to take them on, right? So that's a that's a, a possible scenario. If that happens, this this is uh, the scenario here. Uh, we exhaust out of this area, uh, and we'll return back down into at least the middle of the range. Uh, and maybe down to this higher liquidity uh, at uh, at 33, at 34 and 33. Okay. And uh, now this is the third test up to the uh, 36 and a half area, and uh, very little trading up here. Okay. Let's see, Joseph, uh, you reinstalled Bookmap. Uh, um, it it should your um, it, for Ninja Ninja Trader um, the um, the folder is uh, uh, on your uh, C drive uh, programs uh, and then um, uh, book map uh, and then you'll find the uh, Ninja Cater in the uh, in the NT folder. Oh, for equities, equities you you, you won't um, you won't add it that way at all. Uh, in fact. Um, uh, that's why Bookmap offers this multiple connectivity here, okay? Uh, and um, uh, you can uh, just connect, uh, just connect up to uh, your um, uh, your Ninja Trader, uh, and then uh, uh, add your uh, DX feed. Okay, so go to configure. And uh, I've already added it here, so I'm not going to uh, remove it, or else I'll lose my data. Uh, but uh, then you'll add you'll add a, um, connectivity here. Okay, so it's not working in Ninja. So you you can't find the Ninjicator. You cannot import the Ninjicator. Is that the issue? Okay, so yeah, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Just a minute. Okay, here it is. So you go to um, your C drive, okay? This PC, C drive, program files, x86, book map, uh, and then NT is the folder here. Uh, and then it uh, depends on uh, what version of Ninja you're using. If you're using seven, then you wanna use this one. If you're using Ninja eight, then you wanna use, you wanna import the one for book map uh, indicator 
V8. Hmm. Okay, you don't have it in the download. Um, that's odd. It should be there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe, you know, what, what might have happened is, uh, you know, that maybe you, you downloaded it, but it was a partial download. Uh, that could be the issue. So may, maybe uh, down, try downloading it again. Okay, logging into Bookmap and, and, and just, um, yeah, delete it completely. Um, this, this is what to do, uh, Joseph. The, the way to go would be to, uh, on your new, new machine that you just installed it on, uh, uninstall it restart the machine, uh, go to bookmap.com, re-download uh, uh, bookmap 6.1, uh, and then um, uh, and then reinstall it. Okay, so that's, uh, that would be the process. Uh, and, uh, and let us know in support at uh, bookmap.com uh, if you still have issues there. All right. Okay, so uh, what's going on in the order flow? Let's take a look here. Well, we haven't broken above this level that we uh, identified. Okay, we've got a little bit of trading up there, right here. Uh, now the ES is just infamous for rotating back and forth a few times before the breakout. Uh, this kind of activity in oil or the NASDAQ, you won't see as often. Uh, in fact, what you'll get is uh, you, you might get this kind of swing down here and then just uh, it, the uh, extension to the upside, okay? Uh, or the exhaustion and then the move right down, okay? But uh, the ES will kind of rotate back and forth a few times. So let's uh, let's watch, all right? So uh, what we're looking for here is, now this is where we broke from in this microstructure, all right? Uh, let's uh, put in another horizontal line here, okay? And you can see this, the, the volume and time and price that accepted above here. In fact, there is, it, there is a little bit of exhaustion here. I mean, there's some trading here, but it, it tested again. And we just came back down and tested that area. And we found very few sellers. Okay, so um, uh, based on that, uh, I'm looking for this kind of range bound activity here uh, for the moment. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll see. Once we get back up into the top of these ranges, we'll see uh, how, how interested these aggressive buyers and sellers are. All right, but the, or we will see, um, uh, in book map, we're going to see maybe a, um, a skew in that limit order book, a skew in the auction, uh, and that will have an effect on price. And that's this is where book map can help you uh, because um, uh, you, you're going to note that. Uh, you're going to note that very, very high liquidity affects the market. Okay? And, and you need to think of it this way. Like uh, in an auction, uh, you show up to an auction and – all of a sudden, what happens, uh, you know, for like, let's say an automobile, uh, all of a sudden, a uh, hundred new uh, buyers or that want to buy uh, jump into the room, okay? And they're they're aggressive. Uh, they want to buy right now, uh, but uh, at a certain price level, okay? But very aggressively, like at, at like one a, a dollar less than uh, what the auction is going for, okay? Well, that that's going to have an effect on the price. Okay, the price, you know, it's it's going to go up uh, because now there is a lot of demand for it. Okay, even though it hasn't transacted. Okay, and that is the idea here. Okay, now that's there's a, a difference here, and this is a difference between longer term liquidity and that shorter, higher term liquidity that I just outlined that skews that auction. Okay, down here we have longer term liquidity. Okay, at 33. Okay. This has been in the book for a while now. Okay. This has been digested and accepted by the, uh, by the market. Okay. So this is not affecting price. In fact, it, it, uh, it can attract price. Uh, and why is that? Well, because if the market wants to uh, uh, find buyers, it knows where it can find them. Okay. This is not new information. It's down here at 2433. There are buyers here. Okay. But that other scenario where I outlined, let's say that all of a sudden buyers get in here, jump in here very aggressive with very high liquidity. Let's say it's over. We have uh, uh, you know, almost 1,100 contracts here. What if they jump in with uh, you know, 1,200 contracts uh, right next to uh, or one tick below? 
okay? In fact, we, we just saw that activity happen, but it was on the, uh, on the offer, okay? This is what I mean by that market skew, okay? All of a sudden, there was supply, okay? Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. This is good stuff. Um, zoom in here, and let me adjust the uh, heat map a little bit, okay? Now, this liquidity that we saw just jump in here, this is shorter term liquidity, okay? They, they were in and then they jumped out. And look at the effect it had on price, okay? So uh, this skewed the auction. Uh, sellers jumped in, uh, you know, they hit the bid pretty hard uh, and we moved down, okay? And that's what, uh, you know, we, we uh, we just we just witnessed right so uh, that skew in the book had an effect uh, but uh, we can identify this kind of liquidity here uh, and uh, they, they don't really have intent to trade it's not like these guys down here uh, they have much more intent to trade and okay? they're staying in the book now uh, now we're gonna it looks like we're gonna rotate back up and we're gonna uh, I think we're probably gonna test the higher liquidity here uh, 36 and three quarters 37 um, let's, uh, let's see if we get a, a test now, uh, at that area. And they're starting to pull some of that, that liquidity. Okay. All right. And we found lack of, lack of buyers here. Okay. So a little bit of exhaustion where we previously exhausted as well. So at this point, actually, to be honest, it, this is opportunity for the uh, uh, for these uh, sellers here. Uh, if they want to uh, drive price down lower, uh, this is their this is their chance. Right? Uh, we have a nice little cluster here of uh, aggressive selling. Okay, that was uh, that started with that liquidity shift. Okay, and um, uh, now we we can see the sellers are starting to jump in here. Okay, we got a little bit of volume trading down here. Look at the volume it traded up here. Okay, the aggressive uh, buying. Okay, very little. Okay, so this opportunity here uh, was for the sellers. And uh, how did they handle that? Well, here we here we can see no no one traded here uh, at uh, at 35. Okay, they traded a tick higher and uh, another tick higher here. But we're getting a feel for this auction and these transactions. Okay, what's going on? Okay, uh, more more aggressive. Uh, look, look at the, the the dots and the overall delta of these dots. Okay, we see uh, it's pretty pretty equal, but it looks like uh, in this area here a little more selling. All right, we need to see the selling happen down here at 35 and 35 and a quarter. Okay, we want to see a dot, a, a big red dot down here. Then we can see the swing here be broken, and we can test the, the uh, liquidity at 34. Okay, so that's a potential scenario here. All right, the other, the other scenario is uh, we might see a skew in that book that we outlined earlier. Uh, maybe they'll throw the uh, high high liquidity here on the bid, and uh, and they'll start to lift the offer with their aggressive buying. Okay, if that's the case, uh, then uh, I, I'm looking again for that retest of this 36 and a half. Okay, starting to note the yeah a little bit of selling now down at our our swing here. Okay. Okay, starting to see some uh, some selling here, and then countered by some buying here. Okay, so just uh, just in the range. There we go. There's some of our selling. All right, let's see. Continuate if we get some continuation here. Um, JP, uh, if you are looking for um, uh, recording uh, the uh, FOMC today, yeah, just uh, you you can easily do that uh, in Bookwrap. 
uh, just uh, you know open up uh, Bookmap and uh, uh, w when you open it, make sure that you check the box uh, that says uh, uh, record uh, record your data. And then just run Bookmap, uh, and then uh, you'll have a file uh, in your feeds folder uh, on your C drive uh, in the Bookmap feeds folder. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, I mean, you, you can give book, book map a trial if you like, um, and, uh, and record it yourself. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make a video of it, um, but, um, the, um, uh, I, I can share the feeds file, uh, with you, uh, if that, uh, if that's helpful. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just let me know, reach out to support at, uh, uh, bookmap.com. All right, pretty dismal, pretty dismal. Um, you know, we, we we did see we did see more volume start to trade down here, uh, but uh, we're just uh, you know look at the look at the strength strength of some of these moves here. Um, you know, we're just going a tick or two. Uh, we're in a pretty narrow range of just a couple of a uh, couple of points. Uh, still no NT folder. Okay, Joseph. Yeah, uh, please reach out to support, uh, and uh, and we'll guide you through the process. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. All right. Well, not the easiest to read this, to be honest. I mean, I, I still see the kind of slant to the to the downside, but now I'm starting to read some of the transactions taking place up here. Okay, limit order book. I'm seeing very little information, uh, very little insight, except for liquidity at 33, right, uh, and liquidity up here at 37. And transaction wise, like you know, it's exhausting out kind of on both sides, but. In general, there there is a slant to the uh, to the downside. Uh, however, like I, like I said, uh, that that's starting to shift a little bit for me, uh, just by looking at some of this this volume here. Okay, and uh, now we're starting to see buyers start to step in here as well. Okay, and uh, that 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 was uh, that's kind of new, right? So now now the the, the bulls have the the, the opportunity uh, to uh, to drive price higher if they want. Okay. If we find buyers, okay. note higher liquidity starting to come in at 36 here. Okay. Yeah, boy, yeah, this is uh, not not really seeing much here. Um, uh, we can see in our, our CVP here, maybe uh, the columns, uh, we can cover some of the columns. I think uh, uh, Francisco was asking about that. Um, and, uh, you know, so we got, a, we got our VWAP here for this, uh, this, this viewable period. It's right at this uh, VWAP here, more or less. It was just uh, a few seconds ago or minutes ago. Uh, and, uh, and we also have a high volume node here, uh, which is here at, uh, at 34 and a quarter. So uh, maybe uh, maybe that's where we'll start to find some buyers uh, step in. Okay, let's let's jump out and take a look at our bigger picture. All right, so our downtrend has broken. Okay, uh, and um, we need to, we need though to accept above, uh, and we just we just dip below it. Uh, we need to accept up, accept above this thirty six or thirty five and a quarter. Okay. And uh, here come here come the bulls. All right, let's see if we see a uh, uh, little more interest in buying. Not much, not much. Uh, let's look at some other um, some of the add-on indicators, uh, perhaps, and uh, uh, consider what's uh, what's going on there. Right. So we can we have the iceberg detector here. Okay, and I'm not really <laughs> not really seeing much on that either. I mean, we see icebergs on both sides here. 
Uh, Homera, the VWAP, yeah, sure. <coughs> it's this white line here you see in the columns. Okay, so right click in the column, format the column, uh, and then uh, show VWAP line right here, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Now some high liquidity. Look at 1,300 contracts, 1,100 contracts, just just popping into the book here very aggressively. Okay. And then they pull. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, this this really uh, uh, back and forth here. Uh, but uh, I'm looking for that scenario. I'm looking for that skew of the book, and then I want to see them uh, uh, lift the offer here with aggressive buying. Okay. Our trend was broken. Uh, we need to go and we need to test and accept now above the 36 and a uh, and a half if we're going to break this uh, uh, this trend. And right now uh, we cannot. Right, we see that uh, we exhausted out at this 36 and a half, and we trade it right back down. So you can see now as we're going through this auction process. Uh, we can step back and take a look at some of these patterns. Okay, not only is our trend broken here, okay, and we're starting to note like there was a nice cluster of volume that traded up above that area. We noted it earlier. Okay, that's a good sign for a reversal here. Okay, but uh, now we just had a nice cluster of trade kind of down in this area, but still, and you know, that's uh, going to be kind of a, a a little bit of a VWAP for this cluster. Uh, so uh, uh, what I'm trying to get at before price moves away uh, is that uh, you know we have the potential here for this looks like a head and shoulders okay reverse head and shoulders so understanding the order flow and how the microstructure uh, takes place okay and then uh, really defines and you understand uh, you know what what some of these uh, patterns mean uh, what their significance is okay so here, here come the bulls okay uh, and uh, looking now for 37. Okay, we need to trade above the 36 and a half if we're going to get that reversal. Okay, let's take a look at some other microstructural stuff here. All right, note this little structure here that we just broke above it. Right and 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 some uh, aggressive volume traded above it here, aggressive buying. So we have the potential now to trade above this 36 and a half. All right, all of these moves start out this way. Uh, we we uh, uh, we note that uh, uh, looking at the uh, the order flow, it, it'll the, it'll be a microstructural move. And you'll see the acceptance, uh, and that will turn into a macro view. Okay, our macro view, if we zoom out, is this reverse potential reversal uh, with the head and shoulders. Okay, what we're looking for now is is uh, a little bit more macro. Okay, our micro is here. Our macro would be here. We're looking at uh, here. Let me let me outline this a little bit better. Uh, looking for a rectangle okay okay uh, our macro view is this okay we're looking for time price and acceptance above this 36 and a, and a half okay in this area here okay same thing same phenomena but on a more micro uh, scale here's our structure here okay and this is uh, this is the kind of micro structure I'm talking about. Uh, we need time, price, and acceptance above that area, okay, to come back up and test our higher time frame. Okay, that'll lead to that test. And right now, you can see the reaction. We trade right back down into the into the zone or into this range. Okay, that still may happen uh, because you can see if we look at the profile here, that's the VWAP. Uh, maybe the you'll start to find some buyers in this area here. Okay, that'll be your like your POC uh, or your VWAP, uh, and then you're looking for uh, for buyers to step in and support price above that area. 
uh, to, to accept above that area here. Okay, if not, uh, then uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna see the uh, the the bears uh, get pretty aggressive, uh, and they'll trade deck down at least to uh, test the uh, 34 and a half, uh, and then potentially drive it down into 33. All right. Anyway, not much to cover here. All right. Well, uh, any any questions? Uh, if not, then uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up, and we'll we'll call it a day. Okay, more aggressive uh, sellers. They're they're starting to jump in. So we 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 have come down and tested this area. Okay. Thanks, Joseph. All right. We'll we'll help you out. Okay. All right. Well, here here we go. Okay. Nice nice cluster of. Uh, of uh, aggressive selling, right? Now I'm looking for 33 to be tested. Okay, we've traded through that little range that we just just noticed. Okay, and the POC of that area as well. Uh, and um, uh, now the, uh, uh, the the bears have it, I think. Okay, and uh, you know the uh, the structure. Okay, this this trend line is broken, but this uh, this swing has not been broken up here. All right, so uh, trend is still then to the uh, to the downside. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up, and uh, we will uh, we'll continue tomorrow and uh, wait for the uh, fireworks at uh, at two p.m. Eastern time uh, with the uh, FOMC. All right, guys. Yeah, have a good day, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.